Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer on this the fourth Sunday of Advent, Sunday the 20th of December. Our reading this evening is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, starting to read from verse 26. And our psalm is Psalm 144. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise for ever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who, who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John says. If anyone sins... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 144 Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle, he is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. Lord, what are human beings that you care for them? Mere mortals that you think of them. They are like a breath. 
Their days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, my God. On the ten-stringed lyre, I will make music to you. To the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. From the deadly sword, deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message and she wondered what these words meant. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. 
God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was. And he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth. It is said that she cannot have children. But she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. In the words of the famous film title, there's something about Mary. The Archangel Gabriel, God's own messenger, declares her to be the favoured one. God is with her. Her cousin Elizabeth, says Mary, is blessed among women. Even Mary knows this about herself, saying, All generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. All of us, I suspect, would like to think of ourselves as favoured and blessed by God. I wonder, though, if Mary really felt favoured and blessed. Did she feel favoured walking through the town, unmarried, pregnant, and the subject of stares and judgment? or when Joseph planned to quietly leave her and avoid the scandal? And where is the blessing in giving birth on the ground amongst animals? There can't be any sense of favouring as she and Joseph took Jesus and fled for their lives to Egypt. And watching your own son be arrested, beaten, ridiculed and put to death. Certainly doesn't feel like being favoured or blessed. God's favour and blessing do not necessarily mean that life is easy. That we always get things our own way or we live happily ever after. It is not God's reward for right behaviour or right believing. Rather, it's a state, a condition, a way of being. Mary's yes to God is not the source of or the reason for her favouring and blessing. Rather, her favouring and blessing were how she was able to say yes. Mary understood that her favouring and blessing by God were not dependent upon or determined by the circumstances of life. And so often we look at what is going on around us, the circumstances of our lives, and then declare ourselves or others to be blessed or not, as the case may be. Mary, however, teaches us to look and live more deeply 
to look beyond those circumstances of our lives and see and recognise God within us. It means trusting that God sees more for and about us than we often see for ourselves. And that's what Mary did, even as she asked, how can this be? She trusted God more than her life situation. She felt the movement of God within her, the kick of new life and the growth of something holy. The favouring and blessing of God wasn't around her, it was within her. It is who she was and it is also who we are. Because we too are favoured and blessed. But we must look deeper than the changing circumstances of our own lives. And this is especially true now when they are being so severely disrupted. And even when we do not see it or understand it, God is deep within us, working secretly, creating new life where we thought there could be none. For nothing will be impossible with God, nothing. And like Mary, we must go to that deep place where we ponder and treasure. Pondering and treasuring requires of us to be quiet and to listen, to be still, to wait and to be receptive, to be open and vulnerable to God's life in our own. And this is how we let it be. And it's not passivity or giving up. It is an active participation in our own salvation. The Annunciation to Mary is nothing less than God's invitation for us to participate in God's favouring and blessing of our lives. Yes, there is something about Mary, but there's also something about us. And my prayer for us this Christmas, wherever we are, whoever we're able to share it with, is that we all are able to glimpse and recognise God's favour and blessing within us. despite what's going on around us. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Loving God, as you spoke words of promise to Mary and Elizabeth, speak words of hope to us today. Where we are afraid, may we find courage. Where we are anxious, may we find peace. And where we are sad, may we find comfort. Help us to be ready to see the light of Jesus coming into the world. Amen. Lord, we long for our church to be alive and active, attentive to you and ready to go wherever you suggest. Show us the work of your church, how you would want us and develop in us a will to cooperate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we wait and long for your kingdom to come into our world and to flood with truth and love the disillusion, hopelessness and terror which traps the human spirit and chokes its potential joy. And we especially remember all those who will be alone this Christmas. And remember members of our own family and community Be with them, Lord, and let them know your love and your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, come into the daily relationships that we so easily take for granted and enable us to value one another and to delight in one another's richness and respond to one another's needs with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know the need and pain of those whom we love and worry about. And as you look after them, give them the sense of your caring presence to uphold them and to sustain them. And we remember all those whom we know and love who suffer this night in mind, body and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for us, death 
seems so cruel. Help to give us a better understanding of eternity and gather into your kingdom all those whose earthly journey has come to an end. And we especially remember those whom we have lost and who we continue to love and miss dearly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord of hope, for the way in which you surprise us with your joy and show us the extraordinary and the wonderful in the ordinary and the mundane things of life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And we join together in singing the words of our Vesper prayer together. May God's blessings surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. May God's blessing surround you tonight as you trust him and walk in his light. May his presence within God and keep you from sin, go in peace.